Hey everybody, wanted to go over the new saver module. We've made some enhancements to it due to the feedback of some folks on our Discord server. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start out by going to node templates and add in a compact commons. And then I'm going to go to node templates again, add a loader. And finally, sorry, wrong place. And then I'm going to add in a sampler. Okay, and this is our basic setup, right? Uh, right now I've got UE nodes turned off. Uh, we're going to just generate an image uh, in just a second. In fact, I'll give it a new seed. We don't really care much uh, what that image is going to be, right? Because today we're going to go over the saver. So the saver has been updated. Uh, to add in a couple of new features and I want to just go over those really quickly and kind of give you an overview of what the saver is, what it does as well. So the saver allows you to replicate some of the features of Aegisflow Classic where you could export color palettes and things along those lines um, but instead of doing it in one canonical large-scale interface all at once you can add in a saver uh, and then specify which um, particular operation you want that saver to run. So maybe this one uh, we want to do a color palette and then we might add a second saver um, like so and have it do line art or processed image or whatever, right? Today we're not going to worry too much about multiple saver setups. We're going to just remove the group with nodes. Uh, something you can do thanks to our dev uh, partner Mortal who is been amazing, uh, quite frankly, uh, really extending this system and frankly, Comfy UI in general, uh, using some really cool new features. So uh, in any case, thanks to them. Uh, so uh, let's look from the top here. This is an image passer, which basically takes an image from your sampler by default gen underscore image, generated image, right? And then it passes it off to a variety of places. But um, in general, it feeds the sampler or feeds the saver uh, node with the image that you want to use, right? Alternately, you could choose, say, processed here and have it go from an FX uh, send. Uh, if you want to do that, you disconnect this wire right here. And now, if we go in and add in an FX send node, like a FX pipe, for instance, right? You'll see that it links up and gives us an image from there. And if we turn on our UE nodes or our UE links, we can see that it's being fed from, you know, the output here over to here, right? And that would allow us to choose two here and get the output of this FX pipe operation. Right now, though, we're just going to reverse our work there. We don't really, we're not going to go into FX pipe right now. So I'm going to delete that, or rather I'm going to reattach that, and then I'm going to remove the group with nodes, and we're back to a more vanilla setup. Today, though, what I do want to go over is the addition of a user-defined image type, as well as the extra user image info section, right? So one of our users uh, basically has uh, some of their own workflows, and they wanted to be able to specify in the saver uh, that image um, from their workflow to be saved off using this module. So what we did is we added in this user defined must change input input below to match. That is talking about this right here. See right now this isn't linked up with anything but if I had either a UE node that was sending to that right um, and I, I could do that really quick here I'll shift drag out and say here um, well, because it's already there, it's it's basically the only unsatisfied input in the entire workflow, so it's automatically linking up. But what more realistically I would do is I would say um, my input regex might be your underscore image, right? Or my underscore image, right? And then up here, rename this slot to your underscore image, right? And that'll keep its... Uh, link, right? And right now we're just feeding it from here as well, right? 
So to show you the difference, rather than doing that, I'm going to delete this and I'm just going to really quick drag out a wire. Sometimes wires are okay. Right? And we'll put in a load image node there and we'll just select something at random. We're going to select this picture. Right? So now if I were to select 9 on my chooser here, right? I am now using this user defined image and the uh, image type I get to define right here. So maybe I want to call this, um, I don't know, warrior workflow, right? Not with two slashes. There we go. And then down here, I want to say, uh, let's say it's going to be a tutorial. Right, that this is something we did during the tutorial, right? Just as a save. So we've got this image and it's now satisfying the input here for option nine, right? Uh, and we have added in a new image type. Maybe this might be, you know, face detailer or, you know, whatever. Whatever it is that you have a workflow for, um, you could feed this uh, with that image and then give it this title. Right. Then down here, uh, you could also add extra notes for yourself. And those are arbitrary. It's just a string. So you can put whatever you want in there other than um, certain characters, some of which we try to um, uh, clear out for you, you know, new line characters and slashes and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, just stick to standard file naming conventions, you know, uh, within there. Okay, uh, and then that all gets fed into the saver itself. Um, the image itself, actually, just so you can see what's going on, is being chosen from this selected index, right? And they match up, right? So input one is unprocessed, um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these were previously named the exact same thing, and I'll go back in and, and do that later, but the computer knows. So right now, since that isn't something you really need to or should mess with, uh, to be quite frank, um, it's sort of unimportant in the grand scheme of things. Um, so let's go ahead and click our uh, iteration here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get a picture. And it's given us uh, this cherry nobody image. But when it comes up, whoops, sorry, when it comes up over here in the saver, because we've chosen nine, what's going to happen is it's going to actually save this image, right? Because that's where it's coming from. Now, I could do another saver. Let's go ahead and do that so you can kind of see what's going on there. And by default, this one is, you know, selected as one. So if I click this button now, it's going to go ahead and uh, add that image in over here right and save this image out so uh, you can have multiple savers targeting or uh, being targeted by multiple parts of your workflow right and that's kind of the nice aspect of it is that it can grow as big as you want or stay as small as you want as it needs to so uh, that's pretty much the saver guys uh, I hope that that helps you understand how it functions a little bit and I hope that uh, you know, you're having fun. Those of you that have uh, gotten Aegis Flow Schema um, via our member section of Major Studio, uh, we really appreciate your uh, support uh, in helping us, you know, with the ongoing development of this. Um, we have a huge new update coming soon uh, that's going to kind of, you know, knock everybody's socks off, I think. It's really, really cool. Uh, and so... Um, it's basically a new installer method uh, that will go out and automatically get and fulfill all the dependencies for you, uh, get all of the checkpoints that you might need uh, to run it, et cetera, et cetera, uh, with the press of a single button. Um, and it does that via um, more standardized methods than before, right? So uh, previously um, on MacGyver, uh, the way we were kind of rigging it is using just a standard Windows installer. And that made the installer quite large, um, you know, by definition. 
Um, but it also meant that updates were a little bit difficult uh, to the system. Now we will have a built-in updater, so you'll just be able to push update, and it'll give you all the newest templates, um, and it'll give you all the newest you know, nodes and everything uh, that you might need uh, in order to uh, run the system. So anyway, uh, watch out for that, hopefully coming soon. Uh, it's mostly working. We're just doing some optimizing, uh, and then we will release. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you soon.